everyone and welcome to my new video and what is this video about? Well, you may remember in the last video I talked about how you can use uh, the, some stuff in the racks to kind of randomize sounds. Stuff, stuff like this. Oh my goodness. And there were some responses in the comments along the lines of, oh, it w w I wish that I could like map stuff to, to, to all this to kind of use like modulation, which I could modulate all this stuff. And, um, you know, because you can't, like you can't really, not with like this LFO. If I put this LFO here and I hit the map button, I can't map that to the random or I can't map it to... Um, to the very you can't you can't do it but you can if you use an external midi controller so if i hit like command m you can see that the random button turns blue which means that it's it's available to be mapped by midi and indeed some of this uh, variation stuff um it reveals its mappability as well so i think this number one here is actually um a selector for all the variations so uh, i've got my um keyboard plugged in right now so if i was to just quickly flick the mod wheel i've now mapped the mod wheel to that parameter so i can turn the mod wheel and change the variations like that so i'm turning my mod wheel and you can see that they're turning what if you don't have a midi controller or what if you want to use like lfos and stuff well what we're going to do is we're going to look at the first stages of what could be a long series of videos about using Ableton as a MIDI controller onto itself, like self-controlling itself. It's a bit weird, but it kind of works. And it's a little fiddly, but once you get your head around it, um, it's kind of interesting. This is the first thing you need to do. Oh, also, I should add that this is only on Mac. I don't have Windows, and so I wouldn't know how to do this on Windows. However, if there are some seasoned Windows users out there who have tried this, Maybe they can offer a solution in the comments. I will not be able to. Anyway, you need to go to your audio MIDI setup in your Mac. And then you need to go to Window and you need to go to Show MIDI Studio. And this is this is where all of your MIDI drivers live. So these are all of the things that I have at some point plugged into my computer that can send and receive MIDI, most likely send MIDI. So you can see my Push 2 is currently online. My Novation SL Mark III is currently online. And here are some other things that uh, I'm not yet. Well, the Model 12 is there as well. But this, this is the IAC driver. This is kind of like an, an internal MIDI driver to send MIDI like around your computer. Um, I've currently enabled mine to go online. If you double click that, there's a little checkbox here that says devices online. You need to make sure that that's checked. I believe you can create more than one. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's called IAC driver. I could give it my own name if I want, but I'm not going to do that. Anyway, so let's close that. Uh, let's close the uh, audio MIDI setup. We don't need that anymore. And then we go back to Ableton and we need to go into our preferences. And in the MIDI tab, you can see that IAC driver bus one is now available as a MIDI port. So it's kind of a virtual port, I suppose. And I've enabled track, sync and remote on the input and track, uh, sync and remote on the output. And it will even do MPE, but I'm not going to do that today. So there we go. We've got this interesting little kind of ghost MIDI device living in our computer now. So what we can do is we can go back into Ableton. We can create a new MIDI track and I'm going to create a MIDI clip here and I'm going to go to the envelopes and I'm going to go to MIDI control, which I'm already on. And I'm going to go to um, CC1, I guess that is, or maybe not zero, 01, maybe it's 2. I always thought the mod wheel was 1. Anyway, we're going to go for the modulation wheel. And I'm going to click the loop brace, right click here and just draw in a nice sine wave like this. OK, and now I can, uh, let's close that down a little bit. Um, I can now send that out of Ableton as a CC message. All right. So if I go to the MIDI 2 drop down, I can say send to the IAC driver on bus one. OK, now if I fire that off, you can't really see or hear anything because it's just sending a CC message out of Ableton in the form of this sine wave. And we can actually bring that back in <laughs> to Ableton as a MIDI controller. So first of all, I'm just going to delete that. Um, CC I mapped earlier. So if I leave that clip running now, go to my instrument rack here, and then I'm going to go Command M or, you know, hit the MIDI map button or whatever you want to do. And then I'm going, right, you can already see it's mapped something. We don't want that. So we're going to delete that. I'm going to click 
the variation selector and now that has been mapped to the CC coming from the automation in this clip. So if I turn off MIDI mapping now, there we go. That MIDI clip is modulating all those variations. Ah, but it isn't triggering them. Uh, so they're not triggering. That's interesting. So probably we need to have a button. We need a CC message for the play button. All right, let's investigate that. Let's investigate that. Let's make a new MIDI channel. Um, and let's just put a clip in here and let's just draw in like a note like this. And let's send that out of the to the IAC driver on channel two. Fire that off. Oh my God. That's interesting. <laughs> Uh, all right, so it's actually sending that MIDI back to that, which it really wasn't what I was expecting. So I'm going to choose push two as my input here. Okay, that's that's remedy that I'll know now my push is going a little bit weird. Anyway, let's go back to the instrument rack. Let's go command M. Let's see if this works. Let's click that play button. See if this is working. Yeah, it's doing it. Okay, let's just draw in like a, a chord here and uh, see <laughs> what this sounds like. It won't sound very good, but I don't know. Let's just see what it's doing. Come on then, do your thing. So you can see we've got one LFO selecting the variation. The note is... Um, this note is triggering the play button for that variation and it's changing the variation. I didn't really think this through, um, but it works. Let's maybe make this MIDI note a bit longer or something, or maybe shorter. Let's maybe make it shorter. It seems to be only triggering those two. Anyway, that is a start. Um, let's do away with those for a minute. Let's go back to the MIDI mapping and delete those mappings. And let's see if we can use a MIDI note to trigger the random button so that we can um, use, uh, you know, like a MIDI note to, to trigger it from inside Ableton. So let's um, create a new MIDI track. Let's make a note. And that note, it can be any note, it doesn't matter, because all it's taking is, I believe, just the note on and a note off message. Uh, let's send that to the IAC driver. And channel one is fine. Let's go back here. Let's hit, okay, the, the, the clip needs to be playing so that it can receive the MIDI, which is, it does make this process a little fiddly. Um, okay, so already um, because that MIDI note is playing and because the last thing I clicked was the device itself, it's mapped the device selection to that. That's fine. We can just delete that and then we hit the random button. Okay. And that's mapped. And now that MIDI note is triggering that random button. And you can randomize all that stuff. So if I maybe make a clip here that's the same length as that clip we can get like a, let's try that, yeah. That's randomizing on each new pass of the clip. Whoa! So there you can use MIDI clips to um, do things like that, like anything that is not mappable to say the LFO and quite a few things are not, um, then you can use the IAC driver and use Ableton MIDI clips um, as a MIDI controller and it'll work with CCs and it'll work with messages. So another example might be that if I wanted to, I mean, you could use the LFO, the normal LFO for this, but if I wanted to say modulate the the panning here with the IAC driver I could do that I could go make a new clip here 
go into the MIDI envelopes, hit MIDI control, just pick anything you want. I'll pick mod wheel again, and then I'll um, click the loop brace, right click, make a uh, sine wave like that, route that to the IAC driver, perhaps on a different channel, um, and then hit go and hit map. Okay, it's it's assigning itself back to itself. <laughs> this is this is where it gets a little bit tricky. I don't want that one. Let's delete that. Uh, maybe, gosh, this is actually a lot more challenging than I thought it would be. Let's stop those clips and just have this one triggered and then click that panning pot there. And now that, uh, did that work? No, I had too many. It's it's mapped to too many things. If you if it maps to more than one thing, it will get upset. You don't want that. So you really want to have this MIDI mapping thing open. This isn't really the most intuitive thing in the world. I'm posting it just to look clever. Um, so let's delete that and that and just have the pan pot mapped. There we go. So now that clip is... No, it isn't. <laughs> Oh, it worked. It worked this morning. I promise it works. Look, it's running and it's not even... What's going on there? Try a different channel. Let's delete that. See what this one's like. That's a little bit better. Okay. Like I say, this is going to take a little bit of time to wrap your head around, but it is possible um, and it's uh, it could be very interesting. You could use, um, you know, like an arpeggiator to randomize stuff. Um, I'd be interested to see if it records the MIDI uh, or rather if it records the automation to a clip. It looks like it will not. No. OK, that's fine. Anyway, just a little sort of cheeky idea, a way to hack Ableton and kind of use it as a MIDI controller back into itself. So all you need to do is just enable the IAC driver on your audio MIDI settings on Mac and then make some MIDI clips, root it out and um, have a fun and frustrating time <laughs> trying to make that useful. Um, maybe I'll sort of iron this idea out and come up with something in the future that's a little bit more. Whoa. Okay. That's all for now. See you next time. Have a nice time. Thanks. Bye.